ready whenever you are. Are we cool with some product placement? Yeah, it's fine. Mmm, <laughs> delicious. All right, um, this is the Cancer Bats. Uh, Liam? Yeah. All right, and you're the lead singer? Yeah. All right, sweet. Uh, who is your current tattoo artist? Um, ooh, I've been getting a lot of, I get a lot of different stuff from people. Or if you don't have one, you can name them a few. Yeah, I'd say like our main guy uh, is a dude, Daniel Ennis, who tattoos out of Toronto at a place called Pearl Harbor Gift Shop. And he's done like a lot of work on me into that uh, moth, into that wolf's head, um, to that rose. Let's say you favor the black and gray. Yeah, I've kind of kept my arms all like, just, uh, just black work. I started getting um, just like black tattoos and I found they healed so much better. And I'm kind of just into that vibe, you know, like right. wear less like color stuff. I recently just got tattooed by uh, Uncle Alan out of Copenhagen. Um, he, his shop conspiracy is uh, is just open there with uh, Echo. I don't know if you're with him. He's like another awesome hero guy. But yeah, super stoked on that. So, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, how did you come up with the name Cancer Bats, and why do you feel it suits you guys? Um, Cancer Bats, I came up with the name when I was actually just like fucking around at work, um, just like killing time, like coming up with potential band names. Like even before the band started, I was like, I'm gonna start a band. This should be called this, and I was like just putting together like diseases and rules, and like seeing where it went from there. And uh, I like Cancer Bats because I felt like uh, I couldn't think of any other band that was called that, and to me it just like sounded like a rock and roll kind of hardcore band. Like, what we, I knew we were going to start, it just like that made the most sense to me. When I first heard it, I thought it was kind of rock and roll -ish. Oh, okay. Yeah, I definitely, and, and especially that kind of whole, like, more spookier end of things. But uh, I feel like a lot of times when people hear it, they're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. You know, and they hear, like, how dirty our band is, I guess. <laughs> nice. All right, now, uh, what was it like playing with other great bands like Nora, Bleeding Through, and Every Time I Die? Um, awesome. Definitely, like, all those Stoked because like for me like those three bands were like, you know important bands in hardcore like for me growing up and stuff and especially like you know every time I die being from Buffalo like from Toronto so it was like a band that I saw a lot um, so getting to tour with them really early on like, we toured with them in 2005 2006 and then again just this year um, and always awesome become like really good friends with those dudes so yeah we actually saw uh, leading through in uh, Florida. Uh, they actually opened up for Slayer and Marilyn Manson. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember we toured with them in 2007 and then again in 2008. And uh, yeah, we became like great friends with those dudes. Um, and uh, yeah, played with Nora was like one of our first like, shows. And now we're on Good Fight, which is run by Carl. So yeah, it, it was it's cool like meeting all those dudes who, you know, kind of we've all come from the same spot, like as far, even though like, you know, wherever it's just like all people that kind of grew up in that same era of hardcore so like have a lot of like and uh tell us about making up the video for the cover of the beastie boys song sabotage uh, um yeah that, i mean it was a lot of fun with that we uh we got a whole bunch of our friends to come in and, uh, for us like when we thought about doing the video it was kind of like uh you know like the, the song itself isn't that original so you know what i mean like we don't really change it at all so we kind of looked at the video as like our chance to be like at least somewhat original, you know, to not just like redo the whole cop thing, to actually like have fun with it and like do something that's like just as good as theirs. So uh, I was stoked. Like it was the director and I like coming up with like a lot of ideas. Like, we make this thing really cool, you know. Um, so that was that was really fun. Definitely like making that. And uh, do you have any big plans in the future? Um, definitely just like touring like crazy for this record. Um, right after this, we go to Europe, um, Australia, Japan, England for like the rest of the year. So I'm really psyched for that. It's never been to Europe one day, I will be there. Yeah, it's awesome. I definitely recommend it to anyone out there to go. It's super fun. And uh, do you have any uh, pre show rituals that you guys do? Um, we're all old, so we all warm up. Philly on the old lot, a lot of stretching and stuff. Yeah, I find in like tattoo world, it's not that old. I find it in the metal world sometimes. <laughs> Definitely feel like those guys. Little 20 year olds running all over the place. Uh, yeah, we went to quite a, there. Maybe not that young. That kind of metal fan. Aww. Our last show in Florida was Adrian Silverstein and August Burns Red. Oh, okay. I 
that was the old scooter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Maybe aside with, from the silver scene guys. Oh, we smelled with sweat and hairspray. <laughs> we played the Cincinnati show of that. With them. Yeah, we were on tour with Rain Supreme. And we had a day off, so we left the like super small basement hardcore tour and then went and played like massive, you know, like huge show with those dudes. It was cool. Nice. And uh, what's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you guys on tour? Um, I don't know. I feel like anytime we go to some place completely random and people know who we are, you know, like we were in, we were flying to Australia one time and we had a layover in Singapore and there was a guy working at the coffee shop who like knew who our man was, like recognized me and was just like, oh, don't worry about it. Like everything's on the house. Like we'll give you whatever you want for free. And I was like, we're in Singapore. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, this is crazy. And he was super stoked. Like really cool kid. We gave him like a bunch of seven inches and like hung out for like our whole time. He was just telling us about like the hardcore scene in Singapore and like how cool it is. It's like never thought, you know what I mean, that yeah. we'd be traveling that far or that like this band would kind of be on that level of recognition. I don't know. It was really cool. Yeah. Um, do you or any of the other guys have any side projects? Um, our bass player Jay and I have a band called Bad Vibes. That we're, that we're starting up, which is me on drums and me on guitar, but 